Much has happened since we last checked out the Shoshone, and you can see that the world has changed quite a bit. So domestic policies are going as planned. Pretty much everything I talked about wanting to do has happened. I got the city out here. I had to slightly anger my pet and ally, the Egyptians. You can see there's still a little butter about that, because I had to make sure they didn't settle there before I settled there. I really wanted this city. So everything's coming up Millhouse. And I ended up declaring war on Poland because I had to. I liberated Thebes pretty trivially because I have a gigantic army that is, I believe, still the largest in the world. It is, in fact, the largest in the world by quite some margin. So you might recall all this business here. Uh, every military plan I had worked out fine. I liberated Thebes because the city wouldn't really get me much, and I actually want Egypt to be reasonably powerful country so that it can just be my trading partner and ally mostly because they're going to be mine anyway my culture is completely dominating them i can actually just annex their cities at some point in the future if i really need to but this is basically my pet and trading partner for the rest of the game so in terms of poland i just suddenly declared war after having set up this system here to protect myself and be and have a launching point to then come into thebes and later it's interesting because if you'll notice what I did here, part I didn't really capture all these turns. There was I wasn't gonna record this every single turn. You get bored to death, but you'll notice that I got a lot of redundant roads here. That is why this was able to move so quickly. Because these redundant roads through these forts, especially here, there's a road in every one of these, meant that I could have a sort of salient here with some defensive forces, ready for whatever, because I did expect Poland to declare war on me. I was actually shocked that Poland didn't declare war on me, uh, especially before I was ready. I was kind of worried about that, so I had this army here waiting. But as I built up my army of longswordsmen, who are now musketmen, I lined them up all down here so that I could very rapidly, because of these roads, redeploy, rearrange, and when it was time to actually start a war, I let them come in, I inflicted severe casualties against this hard point, and then I sprung forward. Oops. Well, I guess I just moved that guy there. Oh, actually, I won't be so bad. I can take out these lingering forces. So yeah, anyway, because I can move these around, I could very quickly get a giant force to spring in around Thebes, surround it. I captured it in, like, two turns, and I immediately liberated it. I liberated it partly because, I want, uh, other than just having Egypt here and a little more powerful and useful, there's no luxury resource that Thebes would have that I don't already have. And Thebes wasn't the greatest city when I looked at it. So I kind of just let it be, because I wanted the happiness buffer to be able to take a bunch of Polish cities. So Roklaw, which I took pretty much tri tri trivially, because as soon as I got peace, because as soon as I liberated Thebes, Egypt isn't actually at war with Poland, so now my army is sitting entirely within these protected borders, and Poland would have to also declare war on Egypt if they wanted to attack me. And I immediately just sprung forward with these roads that were already in place, and the rest of my army, the reserves that I didn't send into Thebes, I had them follow this road along, and I hit Roklaw and took it almost immediately. And to my pleasant surprise, there's a wonder here. So this is actually a pretty good city, and it got me a luxury resource, Truffles. So now, with the furs here, and uh, there's some ivory hanging out over here. I don't think I'll get it right away. But this is a great city, and look how huge it is. Taking this city may seal the game for me. I could probably get other cities if I left R Warsaw alone, but... I think I can take Warsaw pretty trivially, and then I think I'm also going to take Krakow. I don't know if I actually care about Lodz or not. I might let, I might let Poland continue to, continue to exist as a rump state with Poznan, which, yeah, silver, stone, there's nothing I care about over here. I might let them keep Poznan and Lodz, but I'm definitely taking Warsaw. Maybe I'll take Krakow as well. And just I'll leave these two cities separated, so it'll be very difficult for Poland to ever challenge me militarily. And hopefully that eventually they'll either be afraid of me, or more importantly, just like with Egypt, my culture will overpower them and I can take the cities at my leisure. And then the continent will basically be mine. So, 
Let's play a little bit of Advance Wars here right now and see how quickly... You can see I lost one trebuchet. That's to be expected. Oh. More defense. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. I'll take the range defense. I actually want to... As much as I want... Oh, let's see. Let's see how much damage I did to the city first. Because the most important thing is taking the city. Because as you know, I think I can take it this turn. My units get a bonus when they're fighting within my own borders. Ooh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be able to take it. Oh, that didn't do it. That really didn't do it. Oh, I guess I can't get over All right. That did it. Yeah, this is the important part of the world the game wants to take me to. All right, let's see what's going on. Oh, yeah, there's two wonders in here. Oh, look at all that happiness. I just got a bunch of luxury resources. I just got a happiness wonder. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. I'm definitely going to, for now, create a puppet. Interesting. So now, which of these cities do I want to take? Did I get the ivory? Do I have ivory in here? I don't see it. So the elephants, I didn't get the elephants. So I feel like I should try to take the elephants. Now you can see I can immediately redirect my army around here. There we go. Now let's move this guy back in to heal. I'm not worried about, he doesn't have much of a military. So it keeps wanting me to come back over to this guy. So let's talk about this. I sent this guy over here. I got a great profit pretty quickly because I have the power, as you recall, where I can choose what to get out of these ruins. There's another ruins here. And I just haven't gone to get it yet because there's a lot of barbarians hanging out around here. And I'm going to send an army to take it. But I discovered this whole archipelago that I might settle in for future parts of the game. Especially now that I'm going to have this huge happiness bonus. Especially once the city is out of resistance and stuff starts to calm down. So I think... I am definitely going to... I don't know where else I want to... I could settle here. There's a good spot here. I could settle down here. It's not the worst spot either. I don't think I'm gonna, despite that iron. I'll get that iron from Kizzle. So the only really settleable spot that I care about, because I'm going to puppet all these. I'm not going to take any of these cities. I'm going to try to minimize the number of cities I actually control, because I have two seaports to the outside world. I have my capital that's well protected. But what I might do... Oh yeah, and I got this, like, redoubt for any in case there's any sort of serious war, which is less important once I pacify the continent, but it's still good that I have it here. It also is the only... Well, let's see. Yeah... So I'm probably not going to settle up here. So if I settle any more in this game, it'll either be most likely colonizing some distant continent or sticking a city. Maybe two, but I'd probably start with one, like right around here somewhere. Because look at all this great biz. And a city out here, while it would be pretty isolated, would actually be a good sort of staging point for military operations if I wanted to be offensive as opposed to defensive. Because if I lost a city out here... Wouldn't be that bad. It'd be like Rabaul or whatever that Japan had in World War II. But I could use this as a base of operations for offensive warfare into all this where my real enemies remain. And it would also be useful because, as you notice, I currently don't have any coastal cities in the east. I can really only do naval operations out in the west here. So, having a naval base that's really centered around military and navy and eventually air stuff here, that would be really good for the end game. So, I don't think anyone will settle here before I get to it. So, I'm just going to keep a minor force poking around here and be ready. So, let's see what if I can get, because uh, the player who's playing Poland uh, saw the writing on the wall and is also gone. wonder what I could get out of this guy. Oh, those are the only cities you have left. Or at least the only cities I know about. Yeah, let's stay at war. Ooh, now look, I have the surplus of furs. So I'll trade with this AI. 
كلا بكل تأكيد. I could gift it to him, but I'm gonna wait. All right, so do I leave Lodz alone? I could probably get it to give me one of these cities pretty soon. I guess what I should do is mop up these remnants before I really engage in any further offensive operations. Let's move you to a... It's not the same. It's safe enough. Let's get you in the city for now. Just be extra cautious. There's no reason to risk anything. Oh, does anyone want to trade her out? Nope. At this point, I'm doing pretty well on gold again, so maybe I'll send production toward... Yeah, I'm going to send production toward my small city to help it grow faster. Ooh, and my capital. I really would like to get him Edgy Castle because my power is that I get a 15% combat bonus fighting in my own territory. If I also have that, that becomes 30%, and I think that would give me an insurmountable military edge for the endgame. Let's look at the capital. I'm going to have a great engineer soon, so I'm not going to start on this now. I'm definitely going to wait for the great engineer and just do it in one go, probably. I guess I should start... We're getting to the point where real navies might appear. So I should probably build some range units and stick them here, 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 maybe here. That'll defend the actually vulnerable coast. And once I pacify the continent up here, then I can leave a small army here, a small army here, and a small army in the middle to deal with any land incursions. Then I'll be set. Keep slowly moving this guy over to be ready to take this land. So an interesting question. What Should I build those ranged units now? Guess I might as well build the infrastructure for it first. Might as well build the barracks. 